Here we go again with another red glasses. So we're talking about how do you have a strategy for living for 2020, 2020. So uh, first week we talked about you got to be born again. And what that basically means is that we need to have, you and I need to have a relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ. And we labored over and over again to talk about how critical that was. So the question is, is Jesus Christ in your life? Have you asked him to come in? Secondly, we talked about you got to remember the past. And this comes out of Joshua uh, chapter number one, which we'll look at again today. Then last time we looked at you got to remember the promises. And we talked about all the promises of God. And God always does what he says he'll do. Today, we're going to look at remembering the power. And so if you look in Joshua and read along with me at some point, uh, Joshua chapter one, verses five and six, listen up. No one will be able to stand their ground against you as long as you live. For I will be with you as I was with Moses. I will not fail you or abandon you. Be strong and courageous for you will lead my people to possess all the land I swore to give to your ancestors. So he says here, listen, I'm going to be with you and I'm going to give you everything you need to be able to do what I've asked you to do. So think about this. The Christian life is not difficult. It's impossible. In and of ourselves, we cannot live the Christian life. Just try doing it for one day. It's a tough assignment. And so the point being this, that when you receive Jesus Christ in your life, or when you do someday, if you haven't yet, the Holy Spirit of God comes in your life. And so if you, for example, look at Romans chapter 8, verse number 9, the scripture says there, you are controlled by the Spirit if you have the Holy Spirit or the Spirit of God living in you. And remember that those who do not have the spirit of Christ living in them are not Christians at all. So in other words, it's saying here, if you're a Christian, you have the Holy Spirit. You can't be a Christian without the Holy Spirit in you. When you ask Christ in your life, you get the person and the power of the Holy Spirit to come live in you. So I think about this, the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead lives in you if you're a follower of Christ. Think about that. So what does that mean? So here's Joshua. And uh, he had uh, an enormous amount of responsibility. The baton of leadership had been passed on to him uh, from Moses. I think what he was probably experiencing, if you read through the book of Joshua, you can see this. He was fearful. He was anxious. He was thinking, well, what if the people won't follow my leadership? What if I fail? You ever been those, through those thoughts and emotions before on anything? So let me give you two principles very quickly here. Number one, God understand and understood what Joshua was thinking and feeling at the time. Number two principle, God never gives a person a task or a responsibility without giving them everything they need to carry out his plan and that responsibility. And you can count on that. And it wasn't just for Joshua. That's promises for you and me. So in verse number six, he says, be strong and be courageous. On my own, in the face of often overwhelming uh, situations, my courage and my strength is going to fade. But if he lives in me, then he says, I'm going to give you the ability to be strong and to be courageous. So in Deuteronomy chapter number 31, we're going to go back a little bit here. Listen to this in verse number seven and verse number eight. Then Moses called for Joshua as all Israel watched. He said to him, be strong and courageous, for you will lead these people into the land that the Lord swore to give to their ancestors. You are the one who will deliver it to them as their inheritance. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord is the one who goes before you. He will be with you. He will neither fail you nor forsake you. 
That's a promise. That's God's word. That's what he promises, not only Joshua, but that's what he also promises you and me. So the question is, how did Joshua get through all of this, all of his fear, all of his anxiety, etc.? Well, <clears throat> people, you see, at that time had rejected Moses at times. If you look in Deuteronomy, look what it says. It says, there has never been another prophet like Moses whom the Lord knew face to faith, and yet despite that, and uh, they still rejected Moses, the, one of the greatest prophets that ever lived. So, you know, I think Joshua was thinking, well, if they rejected him, they'll surely reject me. So he's shaking in his boots. So what's the application for this for you and me today? Uh, here we go. Have you ever been uh, in a situation where you've been overwhelmed with a task or with responsibilities as a parent? as a friend, as somebody who runs a company or a corporation, as a pastor, as a husband, as a wife, you've got God's promise. And this is what he said. I will give all you need to do what I've asked you to do. So here's the question today. Where do you need God's power in your life? Tell him. Tell him what you need and where you need it, and then watch what he does. You think about that.